the secret, I think, was that we continually reinvent ourselves. So if something is working, we go ahead with that. And if something isn't working, so we thought, let's stop that. This is Debbie, and welcome to another episode of The Offbeat Life, where I speak to inspiring individuals who ditched the norm to become location independent. We'll learn how to create sustainable laptop lifestyles from the experts that will help us achieve freedom from our 9 to 5. Hey friend, are you looking to land a remote gig ASAP? Well, did you know that we not only have a ton of online jobs you can apply to on our site, but now we are also sending them straight to your inbox. I'm happy to announce that we will be sending our email subscribers legit online jobs every Wednesday. We have done hours of research so you don't have to. If you want to be the first one to hear about the remote gigs we find, go to theoffbeatlife.com to subscribe. On this episode, I speak with Felice, who is the co-editor on We Love to Ski and has written for almost every national newspaper. She contributes as a freelance writer to publications that include Condé Nast Traveler, Tatler, BA High Life, and Country Life. So let's not find out how Felice has been able to become location independent as a skiing expert. Hey everyone, thank you so much for being here. I am so excited to be interviewing Felice today. Hey Felice, how are you? I'm very good, thank you. I'm really excited to be here. (laughs) I'm so happy to interview you today. Before we get to all of your story, can you tell us a little bit more about you and why you live an offbeat life? Well, I'm a freelance journalist. I'm a travel writer. I've done this for many years. I don't think I could ever work in an office again. I mean, I used to work for, at the beginning of my career as a journalist, I worked for Vogue magazine and other, several other magazines, going to an office in London every day. And I lived in London. And then when I met my husband, he was working for a newspaper. We decided we'd had enough of that sort of thing and we would become freelance and just work for ourselves from home. And we've done that ever since. And we've raised our three kids and we lead the life that we want to leave without, lead without going into an office. We just do it from home. And it's been really flexible with bringing up kids too because you can sort of fit them in and sit around them. And it's just much more flexible and friendly. And um, it's great. It means we can travel whenever we want, take our work with us. And that's got easier and easier over the years because Wi-Fi has got better and laptops have got better. And now you don't need a big camera anymore. You can just take your iPhone and take all your pictures that way. So basically, I've just been traveling on and off. Sometimes we do long trips and we take our kids. Um, That usually has been during the school holidays. So one year we went to Australia for a month and we rented a motorhome and we drove from the very top north tip of Australia, Darwin, right to the very centre of Australia. It's called the Red Centre. With our three kids, um, we took our work. I mean, we were writing various articles for newspapers while we did it. It was really good fun and wonderful. Yeah, it was very memorable. We just fit in our work, so we go wherever we want. So one year we went to Austria in the Austrian Alps in summer, And this time, not only did we take our three kids, but we also have two dogs. So we took those as well, and we went by car. And you can drive to Austria. It takes about a day if you do it, you know, from the UK. If you want to do it gently without being in a rush, you can spend the night somewhere in France on the way, which we did. We found a dog-friendly place to stay. And then we got to the place. We rented an apartment for a month. And it was great. We just went hiking in the mountains and our dogs enjoyed it and we enjoyed it. We did our work from there because we knew we had good Wi-Fi and we took our laptops with us and really didn't matter where we were. That's awesome, Felice. And it's really interesting because a lot of people think that being a freelancer and doing what you're doing, especially since you have a family that you need to support, you have children, that it's something that you can't really do, right? And for the most part, this is something that people tell you is a no-no, is a big no-no. But you and your husband 
actually did it and you still continue to do it. You raised your children, you're able to travel. You kind of had your cake and ate it too. So that is pretty incredible. When you, both of you actually decided to leave those jobs that you had that most people thought were really lucrative because you were working with some big companies, right, as writers. What made you decide to do that? What made you decide to take that leap to leave that type of security and do this on your own? Well, it was my husband who decided, first of all, because he was working for a newspaper, a national newspaper in London. And he was really fed up with the job of working really, really long hours and not having a home life because he was just working all these hours. They expected so much of him. And I was, a, I was working on a small magazine by then. I wasn't at Vogue anymore. I was working on a ski magazine. And I realized that that job wasn't really going anywhere. Um, it was fun. I did it for a few years, but I wanted something else. So we both decided to leave our jobs and set up as freelancers by ourselves. And uh, it, was, it worked well. We sort of had work straight away. We also set up a, a picture library. I think that's called a stock library uh, as well. And uh, so we took pictures wherever we went, which we sold to go with the articles we were writing. At that time, it was easy to do. Um, so we sort of could double the money in a way by selling the pictures, not just to go with our articles, but to go with other people's as well. We collected a huge stock library together. And that was great while it lasted. And then the picture thing got a bit more difficult because there were a lot of people doing this. And um, a lot of libraries, picture, stock libraries, who were charging nothing or very little for pictures. So we stopped the selling the pictures part of it. It seems like you were trying a lot of different new things to really figure this out. Did you do anything to prepare to actually leave the jobs that you had? Was there any sort of financing that you had to do, whether it was to save or to figure out what you needed to make in order to fully commit to this new lifestyle that you had? No, we didn't need any money. We just needed laptops basically. Um, my husband was given money to leave his job. They paid him something like six months money because they were asking for people voluntarily. The newspaper was cutting back its staff and they asked for volunteers who would like to leave and be given some money to do so. So he said, yes, please. <laughs> so he had enough money to live on. So we could live on that anyway for about a year, actually. But meanwhile, we managed to get work straight away. So we were okay. You know, we're never going to be really rich or anything, but we, but the lifestyle was so good that we don't mind. And the secret, I think, was that we continually reinvent ourselves. So if something is working, we go ahead with that. And if something isn't working, like the picture library, you know, that was good at first and then it wasn't quite as good anymore. So we thought, let's stop that. And then we thought we started writing some guidebooks to skiing and also to business travel. And that was that was good too, while that lasted. That was for a few years, but then everything went online at that stage. So people weren't buying guidebooks anymore. So we thought now is the time to change again and start doing stuff online, not depend on printed books and printed newspapers so much. Yeah, and it seems like the both of you also were there from the beginning, right? When all of these things really changed from print to online and you really have to adapt to all of these things in order to still create income and make this sustainable for yourself. And later on, we'll talk about how the both of you, you and your husband have been really trying to get your head around COVID and all of that stuff. But I do want to go back to one of the things that you did mention which is lifestyle, right? And I think a lot of people believe that they need to make a lot of money to have a really good life. But as you mentioned, it's all about the lifestyle, you know? And I've talked about this in other episodes before and in other podcasts before where instead of really going for the dollar amount, try to look at the lifestyle you actually want and figure out how much money you need in order to do that. And it would actually surprise you 
what you come up with, right? If you don't need any fancy things, if you don't need a yacht, if you don't need to have the big, big house, you can actually work a lot less and still live a really good life on top of that. And you and your husband have been able to do that, right? Because you are really trying to reach for your ideal lifestyle and not technically the money that, you know, most people will tell us to do typically. (laughs) I think that's right. And I think it's healthier, actually. It's less stressful. You can make a lot of money working in banking, in finance and that sort of thing. But it sounds to me, my friends who do that sort of thing are very stressed. And it was the same with when my husband worked for a national newspaper. It was a stressful job. So, yeah, I just think our lifestyle is great. We live in the countryside now. We don't live in London anymore. We moved out because we could get more space for the same money and um, a healthier, better lifestyle. So, you know, we're happy with that. And our kids have grown up in the countryside. They can run around wherever they want and I sort of feel it's safer than a city too and that's what we've done and and we've been really happy doing that and I would never ever go back to a job in an office sitting behind a desk (laughs) with a boss telling me what to do (laughs) I couldn't do that and nor could my husband yeah I think once you leave the nine to five I mean honestly it's It's for a lot of people, but some people like having that type of, you know, accountability, I guess. But because when you're working remotely, you're working for yourself, you have to hold yourself accountable. And for a lot of people, that is a huge adjustment to have. But for someone like us, once you leave your nine to five and you have that complete freedom over your time, over what you're doing, it changes everything. You know, your mindset, the way you work, the way you see the world, it's completely different, right? And that's why we're still doing this and we're continuously doing this and you have been doing this for a very long time and you've created a whole lifestyle from this which is pretty incredible (laughs) and it's really exciting that we can see that it is sustainable even throughout the years and you can create a life and a family and still be really happy and have that lifestyle. That's true and in my job as a travel writer I have been to some amazing places I would never have been able to go to otherwise. So for example, I've been to a yoga retreat, a yoga retreat in India where I've been able to take my work and do my work from there. I've been on safaris in Africa, in East Africa, and been able to do my work from there. As long as there's internet, you can really work from anywhere. The only time we had a problem ever. And we went with our kids and we were sailing around the Greek islands and there was nothing. There was no mobile signal. There was no internet. While you were on the boat, there was nothing. I'm sure that there are bigger, fancier boats that have all those things, but the one we were on had nothing. So we went for sometimes 24 hours without any communication with the outside world. That was for only for a week though, but, uh, That's the only time. It's kind of nice when you have that when you're out of reach for a little bit of time because it also clears up your mind because sometimes we're so bombarded by technology and social media and everything that goes around with it that it is a nice little break to have that. So you mentioned traveling quite often, especially because you are a writer and you do write about travel, how do you actually manage your time as a remote worker? And especially if you're a nomad, right? Because that can take a little bit of time when you're traveling, you're trying to see all of these different things, but you also need to work. How do you make sure that you have a balance between both? Well, I usually choose a time of day to do my work. So for me, that would be something like, 4 to 6 p.m. or something like that. And then if I'm visiting a new location, so I have to go around and talk to people and see the various sites or whatever there is to see in that new location. So let's say it's a city I've never been to before. I've got to go and look at museums or I might go and look at different amazing views or try different food, things like that. But I need to have a couple of hours a day to sort of put this all down somewhere on on my laptop. I obviously wouldn't take that with me, but I take a 
I used to take a notebook, but now I just take all my notes on my phone. And once, for instance, I was in Rome, in Italy, and I had a notebook, I was writing all my notes down, and I left it on the Colosseum, which is the great big old building in Rome that Rome's most famous for. I left my notebook behind and I never saw it again. So that all the work I'd done, all the information I'd been collecting was all left behind. Oh, no. Um, but usually I just do it on my phone and that's fine. And I can always email the notes to myself, something like that. It's funny. I was watching a documentary last night and there was a writer and they were talking about people not taking down notes anymore, right? Writers not taking down notes anymore. And back then, they actually archived a lot of these great writers' notes because you can see their process of how they wrote, how they did interviews, like their way of creating. And then now, because you have Word and then you can just edit, you can delete, nobody really sees a, a writer because art, like writers, I feel like they're artists too, right? But with words, right? And I feel like there is a process with that, with what you're editing, how your mind thinks. And when now, because we're all of us are editing through online, through our computer, there is is that beauty that is kind of lost when you are writing it down, you are taking down notes that you don't have anymore. So in some way, it is kind of nostalgic when, when you do that. <laughs> but it is also really convenient. So it's like, what is more important, conveniency or, you know, like seeing an artist at work in their process. So there's kind of a thing there, I guess. <laughs> you have to yeah. see which one you're willing to, to, uh, to lose, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's true. And now COVID happened. I lost all my work as a travel writer. That was the problem because no one wants, no newspaper, magazine or online website wants information about travel at the moment because no one could, you know, it's been such a long time that people haven't been able to go anywhere. So when this all happened last March, March 2020, my husband and I decided we would start a travel podcast. Mm. And while we can't actually travel very far from home, we would interview people all around the world who have traveled to different places. And that's been really fun. And I think that's something we're going to carry on with this because I think podcasting is the future more than, certainly more than the printed word and, you know, more than something that you read on the internet because you can listen anywhere and that's what's good. You can be, you don't have to look at it. You can be in your car, you can be hiking and you can listen to a podcast and that's what we're doing. And we have been to some, we have done some live on location episodes quite close to home because we, where we live, we live in a place called Winchester, which is a very small city. It's more like a town, but it's called a city because it has a cathedral in it. And it's surrounded by countryside and it's got some quite famous uh, tourist spots nearby like Stonehenge and Oxford and oh, lots of different sort of places, um, well-known beaches, things like that. So we've done some podcast episodes at those places. And then as travel comes back again, we plan to do more and more of them, more episodes on location. But till then, we're interviewing people who live in different places which has been fun. Yeah, that's amazing. And you're right. Podcasting is definitely a platform that's here to stay. I talk a lot about that, about how podcasting is really a platform that most people can intake, you know, from anywhere. If you're traveling, if you're driving, if you're doing housework, it's just something that's really unique. And for me, I've been able to create a whole brand from it, create businesses from it. So it's something that allowed me to start working remotely because when I started over three years ago, almost four years now, I wanted to start working remotely. And I interviewed people who were remote remote workers. And lo and behold, I was able to do this through my podcast, right? And that's why I'm such an advocate of that. And, and it became part of my business as well as to help people through that process, because it's such a great platform to do. And yeah, I love it too. So 
For you, Felice, and your husband, I know you talked about losing a lot of jobs because of COVID, right? Because you were both writers and especially travel writers. How do you both manage? How did you manage to pivot throughout this whole process? How are you able to create income still? Were there any changes that you had to do? If so, what did you do to kind of make sure there was still income coming in and there was a balance in your life and not go crazy because this is nuts right now? Well, we still got one or two clients left. My husband does some marketing, so he's still got some work. And we have a ski website called we love to ski.com. And that's coming back again. People are starting to advertise on it. That's how we make money on that website. So that's coming back. And then our podcast, which is called Action Packed Travel. Hopefully, we intend to monetize that pretty soon. So we're just building up an audience for the future, really, to sort of make sure that we can get an income from that as well, because that's the direction we'd like to go to in, in the future. Love that. I love it. I love when people want to start monetizing their podcasts. That's like my bread and butter. When I first started, that's really where all of my income came in. But I also love that you were able to have multiple streams of income. And this is why this is so important for freelancers, for remote workers, because there are things that are going to come up that you don't foresee. And having multiple streams of income, God forbid something happens, like COVID happened, you still have other streams of income coming in. And I love that. Felice, you and your husband were able to do that. If you were just solely relying on your travel writing, you would be in a complete bind right now. But because you had all of these other streams of income, you weren't in a complete bind, which is amazing. So that is such a great way to do that. And now you're adding more to it. And I think a lot of us have had to really think outside of the box in terms of how to start making different streams because we had no choice. You have no choice. You have to think outside of what you currently had. And and I think it's a good thing because now we are learning more skills. And I think it's always a good thing when you do that. Well, we learned completely new skills with a podcast. My husband edits it and does all the production side. He knew nothing about that before. And I find the guests and I run the website that that accompanies the podcast. And together we do the hosting, the interviewing. Um, And the other stream of income we've got is Airbnb. That disappeared as well for most of COVID because our kids are now um, left university and things like that. So they're not at home. And um, so we've got space in our home and we rent out rooms in it, basically. We do Airbnb. Yeah, that went very quiet, but that's now come back again. So that's another stream of income we have. And we maybe will expand on that because we're thinking of moving sort of maybe closer to the coast where people go on holiday, on vacation, and do a bit of holiday letting where we you know, from our home or maybe have some, build a yurt in the garden or something like that. We've got all sorts of ideas of different things we'll do. That is awesome. And I think now that people are starting to travel again, it's all going to come back and more and more people are going to start to travel. We talked about this before we did this interview about revenge travel, about people just, they can't wait. They can't wait to to go out there, you know, and for for. So many people have that itch to to leave again. I think that is going to be it's going to be amazing for for the travel industry. So that is going to be amazing. So Felice, let's fast forward to about 20 to 30 years from now. And you're looking back at your life. What legacy would you like to leave? And what do you want to be remembered for? Wow. I'd like to be remembered for being a good mom and raising great kids, which I have done. And um, I'd like to be remembered for being a writer. Another thing I'm doing is I'm writing a book, and I've just finished it. So hopefully, I've got a literary agent who's trying to find a publisher, so hopefully that will be something else I do. I think I just want to pass on the lifestyle I live to my kids and hope that they lead fulfilling lives that are not none of them want to 
be tied to an office or anything like that. You know, I hope they'll carry on in the same way and then their kids and so on. Well, that is a great legacy to leave is to show them true freedom. And I think that is incredible. And more parents should should be, you know, should be like that. <laughs> and to think outside of the box. I love that, Felice. So before we say goodbye, I do have five rapid questions for you that you can answer in, you know, maybe one sentence, very short. Are you ready? Okay. Awesome. All right. First question, Felice. What has been the best money you've ever spent while you were abroad and why? Wow. Let me think about this. Um, I think going on a safari in Kenya is the most memorable experience I've ever had. And I had a massage there next to a river in Kenya where there were hippos in the river and I could hear them. And it was just the most amazing experience I've ever had, knowing that these hippos, which are quite dangerous animals, they're big, aggressive animals, they couldn't get out, they couldn't come to where I was, yet I could hear them. (laughs) And there I was lying in paradise having a massage. It was amazing. That sounds idyllic. It sounds like a true fantasy come to life. That's amazing, as long as you don't have a fear of hippos or something. (laughs) (laughs) All right, next question. Describe what your ideal day would look like. Ideal in the UK or ideal anywhere in the world? Yeah, ideal anywhere in the world if you could live out your days like this. Okay, well, at the moment, all I can think of is going somewhere warm (laughs) and going somewhere with a lovely beach and swimming in the sea. And my favorite location is anywhere on the Indian Ocean. And I love because the water's so warm. And at the moment, I mean, this might change once we're back traveling again. But at the moment, all I can dream about is being on a beautiful beach and maybe going and doing a bit of snorkeling and swimming in a lovely warm ocean and eating some delicious food. That wouldn't be every day of my life. I think that even that (laughs) might get boring. Paradise probably gets boring if you have it every single day. But that's what I think about at the moment anyway. Yeah, I'd like to be there with you on that one, Felice. I'll I'll have a little hammock, some coconut, you know. <laughs> <laughs> coconut juice drinking from out, out from a coconut, you know, just freshly picked. Mm. That would be nice. Yum. Yeah. I, I'm I'm with you on that one, Felice. All right. So where is the best location to live, you feel like, as a remote worker? It really doesn't matter where you are as long as you've got a laptop and good Wi-Fi. And one of the places I thought of working on before COVID came along, my husband and I decided that we'd go to the Italian Alps for the winter because we love skiing. So we would work from somewhere like that. And we found this, there's this lovely village called Champoluc in Italy. And it's really, the prices are really reasonable and the mountains are so beautiful. And it would just be a fantastic place to work remotely because you could get up, go and do some skiing or go and do some hiking, eat some delicious Italian food, do your work. When the weather's good, go out skiing. When the weather's not so good, do your work. (laughs) It's the best of both worlds, things that you love to do all at once and in such a beautiful setting. So I love that choice. Now, if you could have a superpower, Felice, what would it be? Uh, To be able to fly. (laughs) Yes, spoken like a true traveler. But would you have the strength to lift your husband with you as you fly? I don't think so. I don't think so. He'd be able to fly. He'd have to fly himself. (laughs) (laughs) So your superpower would be to have to fly and allow your husband to fly with you. That's correct. Yeah. (laughs) Otherwise, he would still have to take the plane and meet you there. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) That's that's always a good superpower to have if you do want a little time off for yourself. (laughs) That's true. All right. And last question. What's the one thing you wish you did sooner? Travel. Mm. Because when I left school, I went straight to art college, art school, without a break. And then I went straight into a job without a break. 
And I really wish I had taken a year to maybe go backpacking or something like that and seen the world a bit sooner than I did. I had to wait until it was my job to travel. Yeah, and I think a lot of people feel the same way as you do. I'm sure you've taught your children (laughs) (laughs) lessons that you have found and, you know, mistakes that that has brought you um, there. So thank you so much, Felice, for answering all of our rapid questions and for sharing your journey with us. We really appreciate it. If our listeners want to know more about you, where can they find you? Well, my um, podcast has a website, which is www.actionpackedtravel.com, Action Packed Travel. So you can go there and you can contact me through the website and you could listen to the podcast, which is on all the platforms like Apple and Spotify, Amazon and so on. Um, So that's the best place to find me. Perfect. Thank you so much, Felice. We really appreciate it. Thank you again for being here. Thank you very much for having me. It's been good fun. I hope you enjoyed this interview with Felice. Make sure to visit theoffbeatlife.com. Again, that's theoffbeatlife.com for more information on how you can start working remotely. Hey friend, have you been thinking about creating a freedom lifestyle by starting your own podcast? Well, lucky for you, I have created a new one-on-one podcasting program. From starting, branding, marketing, monetizing, and scaling, we cover it all. If you're interested, send me an email at hello at theoffbeatlife.com with the subject line podcast program to learn more. Again, email me at hello at theoffbeatlife.com with the subject line podcast program. I will see you there. Hey, listeners, thank you for listening to this episode, and I'm so thankful for your support. I would love to hear your thoughts on this episode and get suggestions on guests, topics we can discuss, and so much more. Feel free to reach out at hello at theoffbeatlife.com and let me know what you'd like to hear. If you like the show, don't forget to give us some love and review on iTunes. Thank you again for being a part of this journey, and I can't wait to hear how your location-independent story will unfold.